Well, we have a, a number of our colleagues that are in retail settings, just like you are, Steve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the arguments that I've heard from them when we start talking about um, even specialty lens fitting fees is that because I'm in that particular setting, it's kind of expected that I uh, try to keep it lower. Like if you were going to give advice to other doctors that are in the retail setting, uh, what would you say to them about that particular argument? I don't perceive my setting as being that much different than any of the settings of any of the other doctors here. I just happen to have built a practice in a different modality. Mm -hmm. But I still want to develop that practice, build a patient base, keep them coming back and seeing the rest of their family. I mean, that's my goal, is to be busier this year than I was the year before. And that's pretty much almost every optometrist's goal, is to be busier this year than they were the year before. So how am I going to do that if I'm not doing all these specialty things? And let's take the retail setting out of it. I'm in a primarily lower income Medicaid style practice. So obviously if I'm in a lower income Medicaid style practice, these patients don't have the money to spend spe for specialty contact lenses. Up until the moment that you present it, and sure enough, they do. So what you're doing there is you're pigeonholing yourself into a box that is going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes, I'm not a specialty fitter because of where I am, because I can't be. But meanwhile, you look at other retail settings and look at best practices, and they're doing multifocal fits, they're doing medical practices, they have you know GDXs and other you know high-end testing equipment for their patients because they believe that full-service optometry is just that, full-service optometry. And it's no different if you're in an HMO, if you're in a private practice, if you're in, you know, in a Costco, if you're in a Walmart,